You may not believe it, but this is the strangest phone I've ever seen. Before the old man's body was lowered into the grave, a boy placed it inside to bury it with him. But after returning home, he received a text message from the dead man. What's even more chilling is that even though 49 days had passed, the sound of the buried body could still be heard from below. At the same time, the phone below also had a terrifying magic. If you sent a wish to it, it would immediately be fulfilled. This boy was bullied by his classmates at school. He then went home and sent a message to the mysterious phone number. The next day, the bully went straight to heaven. It turned out that a few days ago, this nine-year-old boy had become a reader for everyone. Every time he read, he would receive $5 in compensation as a reward. Harrigan was a billionaire. It was said that he came to the small town to live out his old age. In the large mansion, besides a gardener, there was also a busy housekeeper. The way the house was decorated was so luxurious that it was the first time Craig had ever experienced true luxury. After walking around for a while, he turned around and saw a man. Harrigan was staring at him. Then at the billionaire's instruction, Craig began to read, and he listened quietly. Thus, the harmonious coexistence and the full life made Craig gradually forget the pain of losing his mother. One day, Craig came to the mansion early in the morning while he was waiting for Mr. Harrigan. A closet caught his attention. Curious, he was about to go check it out when he was suddenly discovered. Mr. Harrigan said that it was a forbidden area that contained a terrible secret. Harrigan just reminded him lightly and didn't go into the matter. Craig also understood the rules very well, so he continued to read. During a break, he asked Mr. Harrigan what he usually liked to do. He replied that he liked to read financial newspapers. He thought that this was really very boring. Harrigan said that the most real thing in the world is money. Its charm does not lie in its purchasing power, but in its strong survival power. The insightful answer made Craig feel fascinated and interested in him. After searching the internet, he learned that Mr. Harrigan had devoted his entire life to his career. Some people accused him of being selfish and insensitive. Looking at these news articles, Craig had an inexplicable sympathy for Mr. Harrigan because he and he were the same. Both had an inexpressible loneliness. Time passed very quickly. Mr. Harrigan was getting older and Craig was growing up slowly. In the blink of an eye, five years had passed and they had gone through seven Christmas seasons. Every week, Craig read books to Mr. Harrigan three times because he saw it as a gift of death. They had been doing that for five years. During this period of growth, Craig not only became more mature, but he also cherished the time he spent with Harrigan even more. For him, this was not just a job but a spiritual sustenance that was indispensable in his life. At this time, Craig had graduated from middle school in the town. Because the small town did not have a high school, he had to take the school bus to another town every day to attend school. School life was full of color and everything was great. But on the first day of school, Craig encountered an unexpected event. Kenny, the bully at school, took out a shoe polish and made Craig kneel down to polish his shoes for him. Luckily, Miss Hart happened to pass by and help to resolve a school bullying incident. This kind of thing was very normal, but it was the first time for Craig. After that, he went to Harrigan's house and asked him what he should do if someone bullied him. Harrigan replied, just break his teeth. On Christmas Day, his father gave him an apple for phone. Harrigan still gave him a greeting card and a lottery ticket, but a surprising and joyful scene occurred. Craig won the lottery and it was a large sum of money worth $3. Zero. His father told Craig to put the money in the budget fund to use for his tuition later. But Craig had other plans. He used the unexpected money he had to buy a phone of the same brand to give to Harrigan. After receiving the phone, Mr. Harrigan was very surprised. He said he didn't want to use electronic devices because they were a waste of time. After hearing this, Craig immediately objected and then taught Mr. Harrigan how to use the phone. When he learned that, he could immediately search for the stock market and news. Mr. Harrigan was very surprised because the phone also had this function. Then Craig also taught him how to send and receive text messages, how to set unique ringtones for incoming calls, and many other functions that he couldn't understand. He refreshed Mr. Harrigan's understanding of the world. And finally, he happily accepted the gift. With the advent of new things, their topics outside of reading books became wider and wider. Mr. Harrigan was like Craig's grandfather. And their conversations were like those between family members. But Craig's father told him to quit his current job, fearing that it would affect his college life. But Craig didn't pay attention to his father's words because he had come to regard Mr. Harrigan as his grandfather. On that day, he even sent Mr. Harrigan a congratulatory message. But he didn't reply because the very next day when he went to the mansion, Mr. Harrigan had passed away forever. He couldn't wake him up no matter what. Craig suppressed the pain in his heart when he returned home. He took Mr. Harrigan's phone with him and then sent a message to him. I'll miss the afternoons we spent together. A memorial service for Mr. Harrigan was held at the church. 
and Craig was the last person to approach him. After looking round and making sure no one was watching, Craig put Harrigan's phone back in his pocket. He hoped that Harrigan could use it to comfort himself in heaven. On the day of Harrigan's funeral, Craig saw his mother's grave not far away. He hadn't been to the cemetery since his mother died, because he still believed that she was alive. After the funeral, Harrigan's financial advisor approached Craig and said he had a letter for him. In the car with his father, Craig read the letter. Harrigan said that he had left $800,000 in the reading fund for him. Harrigan thought that this money would be enough for Craig to complete the first stage of his life. At the end of the letter, Harrigan wrote that he would also miss the afternoons they spent together. This sentence immediately made Craig jump. He quickly took out his phone to confirm. Sure enough, it was the same message he had sent the day before. That night, Craig stared at his phone, deep in thought. He immediately called Harrigan, but of course, there was no answer. But he left a message for him, I miss you, Mr. Harrigan. I'm very grateful for the money you left me. If that money could bring you back to life, I would be willing to give it up. The next day, as usual, Craig checked his phone. But what he saw made his hair stand on end. Harrigan had sent him another message. Don't forget to like the video, kid. He quickly ran downstairs and told his father. He told him to find the Gravidigger as soon as possible because there was a chance that Harrigan was still alive. Craig's father was very surprised when he heard this. He said that after Harrigan died, an autopsy was performed. So it was impossible for him to be alive. To confirm his suspicions, Craig rode his bike to the cemetery and called Harrigan. He lay on the ground and listened carefully. He heard a familiar sound coming from below. This was very strange. Could Harrigan's phone have been hacked? But why would someone hack it just to send Craig a text message? After that, nothing else happened. Craig went back to school and started living his normal life. Just when he was about to forget about it. Something strange happened. One day, when Craig's school was having a dance, Kenny dragged him downstairs. It turned out that he was still angry about what had happened before. He crossed Craig's arms and beat him up. But the situation quickly turned around. On the way home, Craig's father asked him who had beaten him up. But Craig kept it a secret. He would rather tell Harrigan about it than his father. That night, he called Harrigan and told him what had happened. The next morning, Craig's friend told him that the bully was dead. It was said that when he died, his body was lying on the ground with his arms crossed. And he was still holding a shoe polish can in his hand. This made Craig very suspicious. Could it be that Harrigan had appeared in the sky and punished him? Although Kenny was a scum, he didn't deserve to die. At night, Craig called Harrigan again and asked him if Kenny's death was related to him. He asked Harrigan to knock three times on the wall of his room if that was the case. There was no result. Craig felt that this way of thinking was stupid. He realized that he had been overthinking. But at that moment, the familiar call came in. It was definitely from Harrigan. Just as he was about to answer the call, it hung up. Suddenly, the phone sent a message. Craig looked down and checked. It was a message from Harrigan. Knock, knock, knock. This scene completely shocked Craig. An inexplicable fear invaded his heart, and he felt incredibly guilty because of Kenny's death. Craig went to a phone store the next day and exchanged his old phone for a new one. After returning home, he hid the old phone and hoped that all of this was just a dream. Time passed quickly. Craig got into college and moved away from the small town. His new life made him very happy. It seemed that the past was over, but not long after that, something unimaginable happened. Craig's father called him and said that his teacher, Ms. Hart, had died in a car accident. She was the teacher he respected most. He quickly returned to the familiar small town and attended the memorial service for his teacher. At this time, a friend told Craig that the culprit was a driver, but the driver was not punished and was able to get away with it because of his connections. Hearing this result, Craig was furious. He went home and took out the phone again. Then, he made a phone call to Harrigan. I want him dead. These were just words he spoke in anger, but after he said them, Craig felt regret. He waited in fear and anxiety. The next day, Craig saw a news report that the driver had died. He then paid $200 to find a witness and get more details about what happened. The witness said that the driver had died. After swallowing half a bar of soap, Craig asked what brand of soap it was. The answer was the same brand that his teacher had liked when she was alive. In addition, the police found a piece of paper in the room with his song that Harrigan liked written on it. There was no doubt that Harrigan was still alive. He had even helped Craig kill someone. A flood of emotions rushed through Craig's mind. He felt like his head was about to explode. He felt dejected and went to Harrigan's old house. He opened the closet that Harrigan had never allowed him to open before. Inside, there was nothing special. There were just pictures of Harrigan when he was young. He realized that Harrigan had also lost his mother at a young age. This made him feel even more lonely. Perhaps this was why he had always seen Harrigan as a confidant. Craig then made a decision. To cut off all emotional ties with Harrigan, he went to the outskirts of town and threw the phone into the lake. 